Ace Podcast. You're listening to the Super Co-op Squad in our Justice League review. Hey guys, and welcome to a special episode of the Super Co-op Squad video game podcast. Uh, on today's episode, we're taking a step away from some of the video games, some of the pop culture stuff, and focusing specifically on reviewing uh, the uh, new Warner Brothers uh, film, uh, partnering with DC, of course, Justice League. Been a while since we've done this. Yeah, it has. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Johnny Mac, and I'm here with my good friends, my my uh, fellow leaguers, Garrett Laney. Hello. And Joshua Gerard. I want to be on the team. You're on the team. You're not. You, we're not going to push you onto the Young Justice Squad. You can be. You can be part of the Justice League with us. Cool. <laughs> part of the part, part of the squad. The Justice Squad. You Justice Squad. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again, this is going to be our review of uh, Justice League, which actually just released last weekend. If you're listening to this upon uh, the release date uh, of this episode, if you you know a little bit later, then uh, then it's different. So November seventeenth is the release date for. For Justice League, uh, really quickly, I'll go down the uh, list here. So directed by Zack Snyder and uh, produced and uh, with Jeff Johns, Deborah Snyder, Charles Roven, John Berg. Uh, screenplay by Joss Whedon and Chris Terrio. Of course, Joss Whedon did take over a little bit of the directorial side um, alongside of Zack Snyder after there was some personal issues in, um, in Zack Snyder's life. Um, so just so that is made aware. As far as the cast, we have uh, Ben Affleck playing Batman, Gal Gadot as uh, Diana Prince and uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Henry Cavill as Superman slash Clark, Clark Kent. I should say that Ben Affleck also played Bruce Wayne, of course. <laughs> uh, Jason Momoa as Aquaman slash Arthur Curry, Ezra Miller as The Flash uh, slash Barry Allen, Ray Fisher as Cyborg, which is Victor Stone as his AKA. Um, and that's most of the cast there. Of course, we have Amy Adams as Lois Lane um, and Steppenwolf. Who was that? I don't even know. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can pronounce. Like Jeremy his Irons? Name. No, Jeremy Irons was. Oh uh, uh, no, it's uh. You're right. You're right. Sorry. It's uh. Cr. Cr. Sarin. Sarin. Sarin Hines. Sarin Hines. Boom. There we go. And then there's there's a plethora of other uh, other people you know pulling some duty. But that's the main cast. There we go. Yeah. Yep. All the Amazon women. Yeah. <laughs> Can't begin to name all. Of them. <laughs> yeah. Qu- quite a bit. I, w- I do want to highlight Robin Wright as uh, Antiope. I really like her in House of Cards, although that show is done for now <laughs> hot topic uh, yeah it's very hot topic um so yeah so this is uh review of justice league this is what the fourth movie in the dc extended universe we had man no, of steel fifth, i believe man mm-hmm. of steel but uh bvs wonder woman suicide squad and justice League. right so number five uh in the dc extended universe um this is the one that finally brings the entire uh or oh, it begins to unite uh the the beginning of the justice league with uh you know, pretty much six of the core members of the group released in the new 52 version of, of DC. Um, and so to give a quick overview of this, uh, of this movie. So fueled by his restored faith in humanity and inspired by Superman's selfless act to kill doomsday, uh, Bruce Wayne enlists newfound ally, Diana Prince, Wonder Woman to face an even greater threat. I don't know if that's actually the case, even <laughs> greater, but sure. <laughs> Together, Batman and Wonder Woman work quickly to recruit a team, uh, to stand against this newly awakened enemy, despite uh, despite the formation of an unprecedented League of Heroes, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, and the Flash, it may be too late to save the planet from an assault of catastrophic proportions. So, uh, you know, general thoughts before going in, guys. How'd you feel about the movie? How'd you feel about what you had seen for trailers? What was your excitement level? Uh, actually, I don't think I've seen any trailers for this movie before watching the movie i've wow. just known about it seen posters and, and all that you know that whole you can't save the world alone right uh thing um i stated it from the beginning is that i was hoping for the best but i was expecting the worst yeah that that is something you actually did say from start to finish <laughs> here uh jg what about you i i had higher hopes going into the movie i i saw a couple of trailers the two trailers that they had shown off beforehand. I I didn't think it was going to be a great movie going in. I thought it was just going to be, you know, expected. We're going to see some some familiar heroes. We're going to hope they work. We're going to hope that the movie does. I was hoping the movie was going to do well as a whole. And it didn't go in with high expectations based on previous, you know, movies. Which is not surprising for many people. 
we all had the same thing. Yeah. So for my part, I felt a lot like Gary and, and you to some degree, Joshua, where I, I think based off my previous experience with most of their movies besides Wonder Woman, which even then it really wasn't the the perfect movie. It was good and it was fun and it, it was better than the others. It had its own issues, but it was still a good movie. I, I went into this one with some hesitancies. You know, I haven't particularly enjoyed Zack Snyder's interpretations of these characters on screen. Um, and so that had me kind of wary as well. So I went in really just probably expecting worse than Garrett, you know, um, even though he was expecting bad. Was, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so we all went to watch the movie together. So we all had kind of the same experience in, as far as our uh, our viewing experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, how was the audience for you guys? What was kind of the excitement level? Was there any excitement? Uh, let's see. We all walked in the theater somewhat at the same time, barring getting snacks, going to the restroom and all that. Uh, but the crowd in the theater, the theater was not full. It was, it, it was moderately, I don't want to say packed, but there there was a decent amount of, of other moviegoers. Um, no one rowdy, no one, you know, coming in full costume as a league member, just people just sitting down, minding their own business, waiting for the movie to start. Which I don't think for a superhero movie is speaks anything really about the movie itself. Yeah, for an opening weekend, there definitely wasn't a huge, you know, push for people to go see it from what I saw at, in that theater myself. Earlier in the week, my wife and I went to go grab some ice cream. Um, and so that that ice cream shop is right next to another, a different movie theater. Um, one that typically has large lines. It's not one that you can reserve your seats at. So there's there's lines to get in. Whereas the one that we were at, the, the seats are reserved, so it's a little bit different from the business, but it still should be busy. And this was on a Friday night when we went to go do this, so the very opening Ooh. weekend. I mean, of course, there's the preview night, which is Thursday for most movies, but Friday is the actual day. Yeah. And we noticed there was not a big line. There wasn't tons of people. And so, yeah, it, it definitely makes sense in the fact that right now, um, the first opening weekend was very lackluster. Do you think that might be the leaked Rotten Tomatoes score? Do you think that played a part? I do. I do think that. And, you know, I think at some point in the normal uh, Super Co-op squad, we might actually touch on that as far as what we think about how these things affect these movies. But, yeah, I do think that. And it it it, it seemed to make a difference. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, I mean, the, the, the audience was okay. You know, no one was super excited. Like you said, there wasn't just a huge, like, buzz. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. JG, what about you, man? What do you think? Well... We didn't see a lot of people. I mean, there was probably 60, 70 percent of the theater was full, but uh, the, the crowd wasn't really engaged. No, at all. Like we, we probably were more engaged as far as you know, looking and laughing at trailers, deciding what we wanted to watch, what we didn't want to watch. Yeah, right. no, nope. uh, going in to maybe. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that one, that one. Uh, going in and you know laughing at. There was a lot of little puns and like little scenes and jokes in justice league that were, that were cool, but of course don't make up for, for the majority. But, uh, all in all, I enjoyed, you know, Cinemark always has good seats. So I enjoy their seats, Yeah. uh, for the movie theater experience. Uh, and as far as the movie, uh, they, they did a Marvel with the kind of opening sequence where it just kind of cuts to all the different superheroes and it flashes like throughout different scenes. It was very, very Marvel esque in what they have done recently. So, yeah, which this was uh, already shown at I believe San Diego Comic Con, uh, leaked online, but it wasn't a very good, you know, uh, I guess look. Um, as far as the, it was just like someone's recording of it. Yeah, it was a very gritty film, you know, from the recording of a recording. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, but yeah, they are kind of going to the step, uh, DC. Uh, going to like this is look this is our heroes these are the characters you love um you know they're all coming together kind of a thing so you know we watched the movie obviously what do you guys think as far as the plot what what stood out to you there we go uh in in general you know how were your thoughts on the film uh let's see well the plot was it was decent it wasn't a terrible plot uh not in my opinion uh, i yeah, I enjoyed it actually. It's about the mother boxes and you know Steppenwolf coming and trying to be part of the new gods, you know, from uh, Apocalypse and Dark Sides kind of area. And uh he he is hunting down these uh three mother boxes that he tried once before like thousands of years ago 
uh, to you put them all together in like a what's called a unity uh, unity uh, ceremony for all intents and purposes, <laughs> and uh, become you know strongest of the strong or whatever. So it it was more fun and more cohesive than what we've seen from Batman versus Superman, Suicide Squad. Although there was some fun in the beginning of that movie, it just fell apart at the end. It was better than Man of Steel. It it had a lot of a lot of plot holes. That plot boat was sinking, man. I mean, we'll get into it at the end about some of the things I really disliked, but it had a better sense of fun. You know, the 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 heroes and the actors themselves they gelled for the most part better. Um, I think some of the portrayals of the characters were a little rough around the edges, but they were all vibrant. Again, for the most part, there are some issues that I'll touch on at the end. Um, but it, it had a sense of actual development and and creativity that I didn't and and hope there really was more fun and hope than we've seen. They've been so dour in Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman that you're just kind of like not enjoying it. It's like they're just down on you. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to make the movie a gritty and depress all uh, since tis and purposes, and it kind of makes it hard to enjoy a film and have fun with the film when the film wants you to be to feel bad right um so yeah i I, that's kind of how i stand as far as the overall plot the 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 movie you know in general yeah as far as setting up the story it was all over the place they they had to try to cram five different stories or five you know tellings into a two-hour film and you're not going to tell all the story. You got to have your action. You got to have your, you know, quote unquote plot. So trying to throw in Aquaman and then try to throw in, you know, Flash and then try to throw in Cyborg. And then you see a little bit of Wonder Woman and then you see Bruce Wayne trying to figure it all out and try to piece everything together. Like they, it, it bounced around so much that it was nice to see everyone actually gets a part of the movie to themselves. But then it's, it's very jarring when you're just bouncing from scene to scene to scene to scene. So it doesn't all fit together. Uh, well, yeah, I definitely 100% agree with you on that. Um, I think for, for someone who even has a general idea of pop culture with these heroes, if you have any experience watching Batman, Cyborg, Flash, all of them in some iteration on TV or in comics in any way, you probably fared okay. But if you went into this and you didn't know who Cyborg was or Aquaman or their backstory, you were lost as like you had no idea what was going on. I mean, even 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 me, who you know, out of the three of us, I'm the biggest comic reader. the The Aquaman backstory was ridiculously confusing. It was confusing, and it was almost it felt like it was straight just swept under the rug, like kind of like they just dropped it, and then you go yeah, over there. It was, it was left under the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was bad. And you know, Joshua, as you just pointed out a few seconds ago, that they tried to include so much story for so many characters and do so much that it it fell apart i mean there were three origins we had to get through you know with flash cyborg aquaman yep we had to touch base with wonder woman we had to touch base with why batman is doing what he's doing and uniting these guys then you have the the l you know plot plot line with uh, lois lane and martha kent and them dealing with the fallout of you know clark and superman being dead. And then of course the overall story of Steppenwolf wanting these boxes and the heroes dealing with it. That's a lot to go through. It's definitely a lot to cram into a movie. Um now I'm not defending DC or Warner Brothers, but they are going to of course expand on these characters in their own separate movies. Unfortunately, those separate solo movies are coming after the fact, but at least there will be some sort of uh, context and like after those movies come out, y- you can rewatch justice league and it'll hopefully make more sense. Yeah. But that's, that, that's not, I'm not defending them. No, that's I not know. an excuse. That's not I an know. excuse for them. And I, I agree. They, they honestly should have just copied Marvel and done some solo movies first, then have the big, you know, the big movie. Yeah. It would have made more sense. It It would have. Um, I, I can say that they did they did a pretty good job and for me in particular with with Cyborg and his characterization and his his the way the characters portrayed. Yeah, I one hundred percent agree. He was I, probably one of my favorite characters. The best. Yeah, I think I, I think agree. he was the best. Um next for me would be Batman. Honestly, 
I truly believe as little screen time as he has, I, I do believe that Ben Affleck is the best Batman we've had on screen. Yeah, I, I mean, can agree with that. Yeah, I mean, nothing beats Kevin Conroy, but I just that's the truth. Yeah. But he he is the best we've seen. I think he he's big enough. You know, a lot of times they make Batman real slim. I don't think he'd be a slim guy. He'd, he'd mm. have some meat on him, you know? Yeah. He's a bigger guy. He... It's not his voice, but they they made a good decision to have him have that digital thing. Yeah, I think that's a great, great way to go. Yes, 100% agree. And I think he plays a good Bruce Wayne. I'm a little iffy on the Bruce Wayne. Really? But I do like his Batman. Okay. Yeah. Um, At the bottom for me, honestly, was Wonder Woman. I, we talked about this a little bit after, the, after we watched it. Hold on. On the bottom bottom? Like, yeah. So, so okay. I feel the Flash... As when he in costume Flash, they did a, a a decent job with him there. He was kind of quippy because he was the newest of the heroes. He didn't really have a strong grasp on being a hero. That was okay. I think his portrayal of Barry Allen was terrible, okay. terrible Barry Allen. Um, but I think Wonder Woman had just nothing to do here. Like she was, she was kind of like the moral side of Batman. Like don't bring back Superman. Um, you know, kind of. The stronger one, but also not really taking the lead. So she didn't, she was just kind of there to just be a wall that Bruce Wayne slash Batman talked to, you know? Yeah. And I don't think that worked. And then I talked about it before with you guys. She had no emotion this time around. Like, you know, Steppenwolf murdered her brother, her sisters, and she just didn't have emotion. She, you know, Batman said, let's bring back, let's bring back Superman. She didn't really get angry about it. Like, if someone told you, I'm going to bring your, one of your friends back from the dead and, you know, pretty much bring his body out of a grave site. How would you react? You know, you'd be like, whoa, dude, like, no, like, what yeah. the hell is your problem? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That scene made me a little uncomfortable. It, it was a weird scene with the grave robbing thing. Not not even so much that part. Like that part was, yeah, but the actual like, OK, I'm grabbing his corpse. I'm putting it in the water. Yeah. Okay, he's alive now. Pretty fresh We're corpse doing there. The same thing we did with Zod, but hoping it's gonna yeah. be better. <laughs> but it'll, it'll work out this time. Yeah. I'm so. What do you guys think of of the characters and kind of which ones were your favorites? Uh, up there, Ray Fisher, Cyborg. I, I felt he was very generally fun. He was fun to watch on screen. I, I really liked him being on screen, and I really liked his his attitude towards things like. And, and he was he was kind of funny about it too. The whole uh, what, what did he do? I think he um, he uh, used like a rocket rocket boots or something like that. And you know he was explaining to his dad like you know I'm not the same person. I'm I'm not Victor Stone. And he's like yeah sure you are. Yeah you're still my son and everything. And he lifts up with rocket boots like huh couldn't do that yesterday. <laughs> All casual like yeah. And I'm like yeah okay yeah this this man this is going through a, a identity crisis right you know and it's it's cool i guess not cool to see that but it, it was cool that he could do that so well yeah yeah, yeah I, I agree uh cyborg is definitely my favorite out of the movie and he's the one that i felt got the most dynamic storytelling in this movie like you just pointed out essentially he's talking to his dad he, he essentially has a soul we're assuming he has he has a heart. He's got a brain filled with a mother box, but he is being invaded uh, from you know the sense that he is constantly learning a language. He said, "I'm learning a language that I can't speak." Yeah, and he's getting all this information fed, and then you find out that he's you know he looked kind of lonely, and he's trying to reach out. And Diana tells him that like this is something that I had to relearn how to do myself, and you're gonna have to do it too, and you know. As far as the Flash, it, Barry Allen's just real corny, just real, just it, it felt out of place. I, for, I think for that character, yeah, I think they took it too far as far as a direction from you know a directorial direction for him to be shown as the new guy of the group and yeah. like I'm new to this. Where he was just he came off as just not the character that Barry Allen is just straight awkward. Yeah. Awkward. That's how they made him out. And awkward doesn't always mean new. He, he, you could be doing something your whole life and be awkward. It's, it's a way of, it's, it's your, what's the way you are. Yeah. And he could have just been someone enthusiastic and new and making mistakes, which is different. Great. That would be great. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think so. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's move into like Steppenwolf as a villain. Let's move into kind of the overall plot with the mother boxes and kind of how that culminated. So Steppenwolf thoughts on that. 
Uh, I actually like Steppenwolf. I like his design. I liked his weapon. Um, they did. They again did some sort of digital thing with his voice, which I, I felt was fine. Um, he was just, in my opinion, the character was just so straightforward, like one dimensional. Like I'm here to get this. I'm doing that. Nothing else. Okay. Bye. Right. Which I suppose is fair, given that he had. Uh, they they explained that you know in the first. Uh, his first attempt uh, to get these mother boxes, he was like, "Okay, I, I got the mother boxes, but I want you guys to kneel. You know, I want you guys to, to you know, just being cocky and 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 that ended up not working for him. So it, it would make sense that your second time around, you no jokes, you know, yeah, you're going straight to to your goal. Right. So I can respect that actually. Okay, yeah, as an overall arching villain, uh, didn't have a whole lot of depth to him. Uh, I was cool with the design. I I did not like it, but it wasn't something where you're just like, oh man, that's the coolest looking baddie ever. I uh, had some nice sequences. That that entire sequence of him fighting for the first mother box was was awesome. Where the Amazons are essentially holding their ground. I was like, whoa, hold on, hold on. You're gonna run out with this box, and then you're gonna lock all your your Amazon women in that room with him, and he just plows through that wall like it's nothing you find out later that they escape like they the women weren't locked locked in that's kind of a thing well, yeah he left a big hole many of them died i'm sure <laughs> yeah but and then the sequence when they're trying to take the box away when they're on the horseback riding and they're just using the rope to essentially propel that and using arrows to to shoot it farther out is it was just fun to watch and i thought that was probably one of the best scenes in the in sequences in the movie as a whole. Harsh game of keep away. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. Just the general part with the Amazon and trying to remove the box from away from him was great. I don't think his part was too great in that he was just big giant guy could beat up anybody. Um I would have liked for them to make it more so about the fact that he was a herald. You know, he's not he himself is not the problem. Dark side is the upcoming problem, and they mentioned it one or two times, but once. but I did feel they? yeah I they counted it once. He he said Dark Side's name. Oh, he that's right, that's he right. he did mention it a couple. I think he did it a couple of times, but yeah, that that should have been more of the focus. Like even though he's not going to keep saying like for Dark Side, make it known and clear that this guy is just one of these guys. This guy's minions. He's a yeah. He's a pawn, a minion exactly. And they didn't do that very well. You know, they made it seem like he was doing it to destroy the world and i would have liked for them to allude more to the fact that he was creating a world essentially they keep they did say the mother boxes you know are for something but why do you need to make it such a shroud of mystery you know yeah. because for me what the, there's no okay so there there are evil people there are evil things but i mean even hitler as evil as he was he wasn't like let me blow up the world he had he had a goal yeah, and so they never make it clear that the Stephen, terrible goal, but the other goal. Yeah, a terrible goal, a horrible goal. I, I'm not saying it's a good thing that he had a goal, but Steppenwolf had a goal, and his goal was not to blow up the world, but that's how he make it seem. And his yeah. goal was to do something different. So, yeah. so show some of that to your villain to give him, like as you said, Joshua, some depth, give him some reasoning behind himself, and they. I didn't do that. You know, if you would have told me he's trying to terraform our world so they can take it from us. Well, that means a lot more than him blowing it up. Yeah. I want to know one thing I didn't like, just because I feel like I'm going to forget later. Uh, we don't get to see kind of where he came from. Was he always on, you know, the planet that Darkseid is on? Was he in a prison? Like, he he does make the mention that he is in exile. So yeah. I would I mean, he's using boom tubes, essentially, to teleport in and out. I would have liked to see him or have them show us where he came from or him teleporting to there is a very, very quick scene in Batman vs. Superman that shows Steppenwolf. I believe Luther, uh, as terrible as he is, um, found a way to kind of release Steppenwolf from wherever, what exile he was, or anything with uh, in, in the uh, Kryptonian ship. That yeah. A, I think a deleted scene or an extended cut scene that yeah. you wouldn't get in the theaters. No. So. There you go. Thanks, Zach. Yep. So let, let's move into Superman. You know, he doesn't come till almost two thirds throughout the movie. And, you know, it, it's I feel it's not necessarily controversial, but it's a talking point about how he comes and then what goes on after that. So, you know, go ahead and speak on that. Uh, the whole, you know, as, as we talked about it, uh, the bringing him back to 
to life and it's morality the choices and everything and you know uh batman wants to wonder woman doesn't and it was generally just an uncomfortable scene for me um no specific reason like i don't have any like related experiences to it just it it felt weird digging out you know clark kent and and doing some ceremony or something to bring him back to life which now kind of makes the ending the very very ending of batman vs superman pointless like what was the point of showing the the rocks on his coffin come back to life so he wasn't in kryptonian sleep he was actually dead yeah there's yeah there's there's a lot of little plot holes there in that plot boat yeah i didn't i didn't actually like that and i don't really understand why they made him come back uh evil or upset like that like why was he hurting people and then i guess he was was he insane or i don't know they said that uh he's he's uh scared and, and confused i don't know if that's a result to coming back i don't know if he knows that he is back alive he's like why am i here what's wrong um it, it could even be maybe an effect of like like is it like is the kryptonian ship and the mother box and whatever kryptonian dirty water that was is that some form of the lazarus pit Right, some kind of connection. So yeah, they didn't explain too well uh, why he was going crazy. Yeah, I, I, I just don't. I don't like when they do things where it's like some sort of, you know, Deus Ex Machina, where they decide to try and make the the win for them. So, you know, the the whole goal was to bring back Superman at, at at one point, and they never really had any other plan. They're just their plan was just to do that. Like we have we have a mother box now. Let's just bring him back. Like it just seemed very weird. They never tried to fight Steppenwolf really on their own as a group. I mean, it did happen sort of, but it just it just was weird, man. Yeah, I mean that that first fight where they do try to fight Steppenwolf was very one sided. Um, you know, Steppenwolf not not the parademons they can handle, but you know, Steppenwolf was just smacking them around and everything. Yeah, what I don't like is. And I don't know if we're getting to this yet, but just that that ending fight with Superman and let's, Steppenwolf. Let's hop into it, and, yeah. And just how one sided that fight was, you know, like Steppenwolf was absolutely zero match for Superman, right? And it just kind of made it seem like, okay, well, you guys brought him back to life and you win. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah. That kind of plays into what they're trying to do as the plot, where steppenwolf says multiple times you know mother you wanted me to wait you wanted me to wait uh kryptonian is not here anymore so clearly it it it, to me it feels like that was a setup like i am not attempting to come to this planet unless the kryptonian is gone because i literally have no chance and clearly we saw that yeah and uh to touch on on the on the, the last point i superman was probably unconscious or he was Conscious, but like subconsciously unaware of the people around him when he came back to life. I, I enjoyed that little battle scene too when he's fighting the Flash and he can't hit him, but he's still fast, but not as fast. Um, as far as a Steppenwolf um, fighting Superman, uh, Superman was kind of like smiling and smirking while he was fighting him. If you're trying to fight seriously, you're not really smirking because you're able to dodge his attack and kind of go around his back. I mean, he was straight out just cocky about it. Yeah. Like, he was, you know, making quips and everything. Like, um, I can't remember one of them. He was like, oh, did did you need me or something like that? Like, he, he was mouthing off. And that is very un-Superman, in my opinion. Anyway. Yeah, and but, yeah, we're, we're, we're critical. This is what we do. Superman essentially came. You need my help? Okay, cool. I'm going to fight Steppenwolf. Okay, I kind of beat him. Okay, well, you need my help? Okay. Oh, he's back. I'm going to go beat him up again. Okay, now you need me to help with the mother box? Okay. Oh, we everything, we did it. Let's laugh it off. And Steppenwolf's now afraid. And, and the parademons attack him. This being has controlled these parademons for as long as he's picking them up with one hand. You know, they're all afraid of him. And, you know, he loses his axe. And now they're like, I smell fear. Yeah, the, devour I think, him. I think that was a little rough there, and also, I think I think this is a good point to start talking about some of the holes and little inconsistencies. Who who opened the boom tube? Very good question. Like you know, he got afraid, so they attacked him, and then a boom tube opened. Was someone watching him? Or some if someone's watching him, why did they not send reinforcements? Why did someone not come to help him then? Like yeah, that 
Actually, maybe that brings that the uh, Steppenwolf is still alive, and maybe I don't know if it was Dark Side, maybe Granny Goodness, someone on Apocalypse was watching. Yeah, him they, and, they and bring him back. That's the only explanation. Yeah, I don't um, think he's dead. Yeah, he's definitely not dead. Someone, someone saved him, but otherwise, where did this boom tube come? Yeah, and if he is dead, then that just confirms that this was a plot hole. Uh, another thing that bothered me real quick about that Steppenwolf fight, the the climax, if you will, uh, Superman fighting Steppenwolf. Uh, the the other heroes don't have a, a, a shot against Steppenwolf. Immediately, Superman, mid-fight, going, hmm, civilians in danger, peace, leaves them. Yeah. The world is at stake. I understand, you know, civilians, and you want to protect people. The entire world is at stake, and you are leaving this fight to go save... I mean, he ends up beating <laughs> Barry Allen in that competition. That was great. And <laughs> picks up a building. But, like... If you if Steppenwolf is not stopped, that building that you just saved, full of people, dead. Yeah. So way to go. Me, yeah, it means nothing. Uh yeah, I think I think that they they could have shown they could have kind of cleaned up some of these some of these issues that that were in the movie, and it was just kind of sloppy sometimes. Yeah, wait for the extended director's cut. They'll they'll fix it. There. They'll fix it in post. <laughs> yeah, we haven't even talked post, about post. we haven't even talked about Aquaman at all. Um, just, just the whole thing about him not doing his role. He's not doing his duty. You know, take, who was he talking to? That was Mara. Mara, that's his waifu, future waifu. So she's Possibly. essentially calling. Yeah, him she out. does. She does not know him in this movie. Oh, really? For okay. sure. Yeah, okay. did not yeah. know that. Did that's why that. she was kind of upset. It was like, hey, you're, you know, the queen would have done this for her people. That's what she did. Like, you need to step up and take your role. So just there was some confusing little story there. And Garrett, you pointed out something that you really didn't like about that specific scene. <laughs> so uh, uh, Steppenwolf is attempting to grab his the second mother box, which is in Atlantis. Yep. And uh, he there there's an underwater fight. Aquaman, Steppenwolf. Aquaman starts losing. Um, Steppenwolf gets the boom the uh, the mother box boom tubes out for. Mera and Aquaman to have a conversation. Mera has to use her hydro telepathy or whatever it's called uh, to vacate the water so that they can have a conversation. How does anyone speak if Mera is not around? I mean, I guess I guess they use some sort of hand signals or or they or... just can't have a conversation underwater. They underwater. breathe underwater. You can't speak uh, yeah, underwater. Right. Underwater uh, sign language. I don't know. Maybe they maybe something he hasn't learned yet. Maybe that's it. Maybe they have a skill that he doesn't have because he hasn't lived there. I, I don't know. It is maybe, definitely weird. Maybe there's some other inconsistencies. Um, you know, if 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 if, if Steppenwolf has been gone for five thousand years. And these mother boxes have randomly turned on and brought him back because Superman is gone. At this point, Superman's he's got to be less than 40 years old. Yeah. So you're saying for the other 4,960 years that he couldn't <laughs> come back then? Like uh, why, why, why wait till the 40 years after he was dead? Why not come back 100 years ago, 3,000 years ago, That's a, 60 years yeah, ago? That's a very good question. There's, there's no reason – for the mother boxes to have activated at that point in time. And none at all. None. Steppenwolf was in exile? Yeah, and then he was called so, back by the mother boxes, or so he says. After the Kryptonian died. So why not have done it before, before. the Kryptonian ever yeah. came? Yeah. Yep. That doesn't make any sense. That's a pretty big one. Also, also you know, they, they make this point that Aquaman possibly knows about mother boxes. There's that scene where he's like in that weird, I don't know, town with Batman and like, you know, there's like a drawing of him on the wall. It shows like Aquaman on the wall. Okay, I think this was the part I went to the bathroom with the mother boxes there, and Batman asks him about it, and he doesn't under he doesn't know. Then why is your picture? It's, it's like a hieroglyph too. It's yeah, like old, yeah. like a room. Why? Why are you? Why is your name on here? Just just a lot of little things like that. Where now, was it actually his name, or was it like King? Not of your Atlantis name. I'm sorry. Like why, why is your face on here? Like it's him. Is it? Because maybe it's his father, not father. Uh, I don't know. No, it's a king the, from another it, time. Had the hair. It, it, it's him. Okay, it's, it's like a caveman drawing yeah. of him. Again, I missed that part. I was, I figured that was part of the trailer. I had to go to the bathroom. I, I, yeah, you, that you, you didn't miss much. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Yeah, just just small little things like that. I don't want to go and rip into it too much. We kind of no, no, there was some cool stuff. There was some there's things lot, that I, I cool enjoyed. Yeah. There, there was f- cool things and. 
it, it just it was a mixed bag. Yeah. One thing I really want to point out uh, before we forget, there is a that scene of Steppenwolf in the battle, his first attempt. And, you know, the Amazons, the Atlanteans, the, like the entire universe is yeah, teaming up. Gods. And, yeah, there's gods. Uh, Zeus shows up. And we straight out, straight up, Green Lanterns. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. And, it, I mean, it shows one of them die, and the ring is already doing the process of searching for its next, uh, I don't want to say host, but next uh, ring bearer. Yeah, it's a wielder. Yes, wielder. Thank yeah, you. That uh, was super cool. Uh, yeah, I thought that was cool. It, we it, finally it, see uh, Green Lanterns in the DCEU. Yeah, it, it definitely was cool. Um, all right. Anything else you guys want to go talk about or want to move on to our ra- our ratings here? Well, we do still have post credit scenes. Cool. Let's get into it. So uh, that first post credit scene where Bat – I'm sorry, the f- <laughs> Batman. <A> race. Batman <laughs> the races Superman. Right, it the- was very short. <laughs> ba- Batman, Batman wins. Batman took one step. <laughs> Superman lapped the world. Um, yeah, so Flash versus uh, Superman in a race. and Not a foot race because Superman's flying apparently. Um, but a nice little just fun – a little nod. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. It's been in the comics. It's been in, you know, the Justice League uh, TV show. Mm-hmm. You know, the age old question, who's faster, Superman or Flash? Yeah. And actually, this to me, this movie makes that answer before we end the movie. Yeah. Because Flash leaves to go save some civilians like 15 minutes ago. Superman shows up 10 minutes late and just catches up with them. That... Okay, Superman's faster apparently. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. It right. it was weird, but it was a fun little scene, a little happy scene at the end. And again, we talked about that. There was a lot of a lack of just that fun and joy that you get in some of those Marvel films, and they had that. And this yeah. is a, this was a I think a a strong, decisive decision, decisive decision, a, a strong decision to try and have that fun. Yeah, and it wasn't. It was fun. It, it, it wasn't actually a fun movie. Yeah, you, and you know, you know what's funny? Okay, so you talked about the fact that you really don't like Henry Cavill as Superman. Yes, I don't, I don't, true. I don't agree with that. But I do agree that he, he's been directed to not to be a very like stoic and serious Superman. And I think that post credit scene is the best depiction that we have of what he should be as Superman. He was happy. Okay. Okay. He was a little bit more lighthearted and joking, not super jokey, but just you know, just enough little fun to be a friend. To okay. The Flash. Yeah, that's and, actually a good point. Yeah, and they, that's how we should be all the time. Yeah, it really is. If you lose, you're off the team. <laughs> <laughs> but if if uh, Flash wins, I can tell everybody. Yeah, tell Deal. everybody what? what was I didn't get that. Uh, that, that, he, that won. he won. That he beat oh, Superman. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Uh, so yeah, that the uh, first post credit scene, pretty cool. Uh, yep. It was pretty fun. Minus the Flash's awkward ass run. Yes. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. So in the last like two scenes of him running, they just make him look ridiculous. Like someone on an elliptical at the gym, <laughs> and then you just like take the elliptical away, like as far as like making it disappear, and then have him doing those motions. That was how he was running in the like the ending of the movie, and then in that post credit scene. We just need a gift for that. It it's stupid. Yeah, it's like it's like certain like action figures, like where their legs move, but they move at the hips, and the hips can also turn. <laughs> it's it's kind of like that where he's just moving awkwardly and turning his hips. Well, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no, was, no, sense. It was so bad. Yeah. So all right, so last end credit scene at the very tip end of the movie, there the little stinger, um, and it shows uh, Lex Luthor uh, has escaped Arkham. And he yeah, is, but now, not alone. Oh wait, no, never yeah, mind, never mind. He's he did, alone. He just alone. Him alone. Um, and now he's on a super yacht, and uh, Deathstroke shows up oh, straight up, badass costume. Yes, his, uh, yeah, his so costume. Clean. Sweet. I I like the fact that he took off his helmet so we can see what he actually looks like, and a pretty close depiction of what. Uh, Slade Deathstroke Wilson. Slade looks like outside of that mask. Yeah, he's got the eye patch. He's a little older. Yeah, blonde, yes. spiky hair. I mean, uh, oh, and the suit was badass. Yeah, they definitely did a good job there. And apparently, we are going to get the Legion of Doom at some yes. point. Yes, yes. So that is really cool. I mean, I'm sure we'll see some big names there. Yeah, that means there's got to be more, uh, more villains. Yeah. You know, so far, we got Lex Luthor. I mean, I don't see Doomsday sitting down at a, at a table at the nope. Legion of Doom. Uh, nope. No, <laughs> but uh, you know who who knows who else? So now that we've seen Green Lanterns, maybe Sinestro will pop up at some point in time. Yeah, we should we should get some good stuff. I mean, we have if I mean we've got to have at least three other very major villains, right? Because we have an Aquaman uh, an Aquaman movie, Flash movie, Cyborg movie. Those three are coming for certain. So 
Yeah, so there's got to be some there's Black Manta. Um, Ooh, we're getting a yeah. second Wonder Woman movie. I'm I'm thinking there's probably going to be Cheetah. I'm yeah. thinking Cheetah is going to be announced. Yeah, so I mean, just based on the fact that we are getting standalone films that have already been announced, so they they should theoretically come before the next team up movie. Yeah, we'll have we'll, villains. We'll see. DC does their own thing. They do. Um, real quick because we forgot to mention at the end of the movie, uh, Bruce Wayne showing up into a building and just saying "big round table" right there. Yeah, you know, six chairs. Yeah, no, there's room for more. Another quick little hole here. Just oh, okay. Very, very, very quickly, just because <laughs> I thought of it bugged me. Okay, so Superman comes back to life, but Clark Kent also had a funeral. Yeah, yeah. How does he just come back? It's been months. It's been months. Maybe more. Yeah. Do people know that's yes, the same? No. They don't know that no, they, they don't know. Don't, right? Yeah. But they there's a funeral for Clark Kent, and oh, damn, Clark Kent's dead. Yo, Clark, welcome back. Hey, Superman! Superman's alive. There he is, flying. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't have glasses on though. He faked his death. And then also, you know, like Bruce Wayne was at this farmer's house as he was moving back in. You know, so he's at the house as he he, he apparently bought it back. Their original oh, no. house. <laughs> what is Bruce Wayne doing there? Like people are helping him move. People are gonna know if Bill Gates is somewhere. I'm gonna see Bill Gates and know who he is, or Mark Zuckerberg. You can't not know. Like yeah. So that's true. it was pretty funny though. How how'd you get the house back? From the bank. I bought the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that part. Yeah. I, I do like when they do that with Bruce Wayne, where they just show off that, yeah, dude's got money. Yeah, he does what he wants. Uh, there was a real quick um, people theory. Uh, people are suspecting that. There's a scene where uh, Wonder Woman stopped a bank robbery, or not a bank robbery, like jewelry. Um, yeah. Or museum theft. Yes. She's putting away a kind of golden cat idol, and in the background, we see a lady in a red dress and handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> possibly Catwoman or more than likely Catwoman maybe yeah yeah so expanding the universe even more hopefully we'll see more of that in maybe a solo Batman film yeah be be good all right so I think it's time for the ratings it is time yeah. for the ratings well, there's one thing other thing I want to mention real in, quick. In, in a bit there's time for ratings yes uh, one of the things I we gl- I glossed over it earlier. I just um, got to point out, this is classic Joshua. I don't know if you've noticed that yet. <laughs> Whether I like to add stuff at the end? Yeah, you I just always put add. In my two cents, man. I, just, I didn't get a chance to speak, man. Sorry, go ahead. Um, in the, when they're in the hangar, or this is probably not in the hangar, when they're in the room, and they're essentially fighting each other, uh, I thought it was a little bit of a building block that they are essentially arguing over the fact what they should do about Superman. Uh, this is the only... P- somewhat development we get from wonder woman because uh bruce essentially calls out her flaws uh as you know she's been around she's supposed to be a symbol for hope she's supposed to be helping the people but where has she been in the last couple hundred years 100 years uh the last 100 years and uh calls out uh what's his name was it steve trevor steve trevor yeah calls out like what he would have done and she just full-on decks him which i think was pretty cool and that kind of Send a signal that you know she needs to step up her game, and that also allowed you know Cyborg to kind of help step up his game. Uh, Barry Allen was scared; he'd never been in a fight before, but that kind of built up courage. I think later on, because now it shows that hey, we're all in this for something, not for nothing. And I think that scene kind of helped cement a little bit other uh, later. And then uh, the last thing I thought that uh, Aquaman was a little bit more, a little bit too. Thor like as far as the conversation he was having uh like when uh we find out uh he's uh has a lasso of truth wrapped around him or he's holding it <laughs> and he's like sharing his feelings and emotions that kind of reminded me of what Thor does in those type of scenes where he's like talking to people on the team I, I thought it was a little bit too Thor because I don't think Aquaman would talk like that he's he's not talking like he's a king at all oh, that's why they showed the lasso to to show because he's telling you the truth of, of how he feels, so he's gonna speak differently. Yeah. Plus, at this point, Aquaman's not a king; he has never been to Atlantis. So there's that. Had he never been to Atlantis. Yeah, they made that pretty clear that he had never been there. So, huh? I must have missed that. <laughs> all right, second viewing. So, all right, cool. Well, that is our review, guys. Let's give us let's get some ratings in here. All right, so is it is it Justice League quality, Justice Week, or is it just Justice Stinks? All right, uh, for me, wasn't 
a a fantastic film, but I still think it was fun, enjoyable. Um, uh, some of the characters were fun. There was a lot of nice callbacks. Um, I am actually going to give this a Justice League. Ooh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I didn't dislike it as much. Where it's definitely not a Justice Stinks to me. I, but I do, I did enjoy it more than a Justice Week. So I'm gonna give it the next highest up. So the highest mark, Justice League. Justice League. That it's crazy. Cause Name you of were the film. Complete opposite direction on what you thought it was gonna be coming into the film. Yeah, yeah, man, you gave it the highest rating we could. Like that's just on the same level as like if we had to review Star Wars: Force Awakens or some other fantastic movie. And to give it the same rating is oh I, man, I, I gave it my reasoning. All I right, enjoyed enough. it more than Justice Week, so I I don't feel giving it a Justice Week is yeah. applicable to me. Okay, W E A K. Yeah, <laughs> like weakness. Uh, I give it a Justice Week. It wasn't the best. Uh, definitely was fun. Definitely has its flaws. Definitely has moments that shine, and a lot of you know moments where it's just like, huh. Um, there's still a lot of intricate stuff in between uh, that we don't see, like Cyborg stalking Bruce Wayne and Diana that you're just like, okay, that character's cool. Um, just a lot of little nods, a couple setups for the new film. I, I really like, it was only for a split second and a half, uh, Cyborg's updated suit that he gets with yeah, his death in the monitor cool. box. Got the C on his chest. Uh, so... Will I see this movie again? Yeah, I'll watch it again. But uh, it's not something where it's it's over the top or it's just like, okay. Now, it, I don't think it's the best DC film yet. I still think Wonder Woman tops this. But I give this a, a close second. So? I said just this week. Okay. So, uh, Joshua, I, I don't agree with the reasons that you, ch- you chose just this week in that middle category. I'm going to give it a justice week though, only because it, it was fun to watch there. I, I didn't watch it and just roll my eyes or want to leave the theater or I didn't want to think the whole time. Well, this isn't how this would be. Although that does happen. It was, it was fun to watch for the most part. And I don't think it was a great movie or, or even true to all the way the film that the, that the character should be, but it was close enough and it was fun enough. And they did enough right. Um, I really do honestly like Ben Affleck as Batman. Um, I dislike the fact that I felt like Wonder Woman cashed it in or, or she was directed to not have much emotion. And that wasn't cool. Victor Stone, uh, AKA Cyborg was great. And, uh, there was enough good scenes, fight scenes and enough lighthearted happiness to kind of, you know, match that dark tone that it, it was enjoyable. You know, it covered up some of the flaws the movie had and flaws it did have. So that's why it gets a justice week from me. Booyah. All right, guys. Well, that is our, uh, that's our review of Justice League. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you watched it. If not, well, you know, spoilers in the beginning. I don't know if we said it, but now we're saying it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, so yeah, let us know, guys, what you think. Did you watch it opening night? What was your experience like? You know, what do your friends think? What did you think? What was the best part, worst part of the film? Uh, we'd love to hear, guys. We'd love to chat with you back and forth. So reach out to us. You can email us, contact at scspodcast.net. Or reach out to us on Twitter at Super Club Squad. You can also reach each of us individually. You can find me on Twitter at JohnnyMac24. You can find me at GJL3275. And I'm at Joshua underscore four underscore life. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you next time. See you.